What's up everybody, Kinetic here. I've got a new first look video for you guys of a brand new iPhone game that just came out. It's available also for Android called Rival Kingdoms. This game I'm stupidly addicted to. Like, I love RTS games and as soon as I got an iPhone and I started like scanning through apps and games that I could play and things like that, I immediately noticed that there was like a popularity with RTS games. Obviously like Clash of Clans is a big one um, and some will say like games like this like Rival Kingdoms is a Clash of Clans clone but let's not forget that Clash of Clans didn't exactly invent RTS so it's a clone in itself but anyway that's besides the point. Rival Kingdoms is a brand new game and it's absolutely amazing. I've like I said I'm stupidly addicted to this. I've been playing it hardcore for like the past two days now and, uh, and it's just amazing. I've really really well polished game with tons of features and I'm gonna try and quickly give you a look at what this game offers so like all of these games it's sort of like a persistent um, RTS game and it's sort of like in, in what you would expect of for example like a Starcraft game right where you build up a base and then you go invade other people for their resources and stuff like that except that your base is kind of permanent right like that's why I call it persistent and so this is my base right here I'm up to what am I up to stronghold size uh, a stronghold 5 currently right now and uh, I'm getting ready to upgrade to stronghold 6 but I'm making sure that all of my other buildings are are kind of up to up to date where they need to be upgraded and stuff like that to prepare myself for the next level of epicness because as soon as you jump to like whatever the next stronghold is like instantly like things just get harder it, it feels like like for the type of people that are invading you trying to break down your bases and also the type of people that you are invading against so with rival kingdoms right um, you can see that we've got uh, my stronghold, we've got a bunch of other buildings surrounding around, we've also got uh, a wall uh, also surrounding all of that stuff, and then some stuff on the outside. What is all of this stuff? Well, if you've never played a game like this, basically, your, your home base, right, and this is my customized uh, home base, is home to your stronghold, which is your main base, and if enemies come and defeat your stronghold or if you defeat their stronghold by breaking it down then uh, then you win or they win that's the that's the the aim right is to break somebody's stronghold down so that's why you see all of these buildings surrounding my stronghold and the walls around it because i'm trying to protect it as best as i can and so i've got for example catapults which are extremely powerful in this game uh, we've also got some anti-air like the sky watcher here the uh, the watchtowers are also really good and probably one of my favorite things defensive wise are these spell towers now the spell towers are highly customizable uh defensive structures you can actually assign a, a particular ancient which are sort of like gods in rival kingdoms to act as the, the the entity that will empower that spell tower and give it whatever kind of a specialized power. So for example, I can assign an ancient, right? And we've got uh, tons of different ancients that you can uh, you can acquire in this game. For example, uh, Solric, who is, I believe he is the the first ancient that you will get in the game and you can see right here if I click on the the tower symbol it shows me what the, the power is that he will give the spell tower which is flame bolt tells me the details we got some lore here as well for Solric really really cool stuff and so I can assign any of the ancients that I currently have to that spell tower and so I've got um, what's his face again um, Nyrax Nyrax is amazing I love him and uh, and I've also got uh, what's her name Kestra. Kestra is assigned to this spell tower here. So they are the ones kind of empowering the spell towers, which is really, really cool stuff. And of course, we've got uh, some resources that we are generating here. Gold is one of the, the resources that you will obtain, uh, sort of farming it on your own, at your own base. And you can also, of course, that's the purpose of raiding other people's bases, is to uh, to take their gold and, and just kind of, you know, give yourself an ego boost. So right now I'm sitting on 34k gold. I really want to upgrade my Primus Conduit. So I'm going to spend 30k there. Confirm. Yes. Okay. So now it's going to take three and a half hours. Which? How long do I have until the next invasion? Mm, looks like that is still going to actually be under construction uh, by the time the next invasion comes to me. You can see the counter. It says three hours, uh, 14 minutes, right there before the next person uh, tries to invade my base. But uh, I'm pretty well. I mean. What I, I notice about Rival Kingdoms is it's kind of tilted right now in that the your ability or other people's ability to raid bases 
is it seems to me more powerful and easier than it is to actually build up a defensive base or, or so it seems right now um the types of units that can invade you are are really there's a wide variety of them. If we go to the barracks here, we can see all of the uh, the different units that I currently have and some of the ones that I don't have unlocked yet. For example, the uh, the soldiers here are, are your, your run-of-the-mill type of heavy armor, you know, rather defensive, uh, kind of tanky units that can take hits and um, and they good they do good for like frontline offense. But what I've noticed, and this is, I think for me, one of the things that maybe Rival Kingdoms needs to look at is how powerful the Wardens are. The Wardens are extremely powerful ranged attackers. They are weak against splash damage. So for example, the Catapults, if they are firing onto Wardens, the Wardens are going to go out fast. But that's pretty much the only thing that can really counter Wardens. And I've noticed that um, with a lot of people, myself included, who uh, like to maybe raid with multiple sets of Wardens while they're going after somebody's base, it can it can really make it easy to tear somebody's base down really really quickly um here's another unit that is also really good that i got recently the mauler uh they're good at uh tearing down their favorite target it says here is going after defenses so i've actually seen them kind of completely ignore some structures while i'm raiding somebody else's base to go directly after for example the spell tower or the watchtower or something like that which is is cool and um there's lots of strategy involved in this you may be able to tell with uh, the different units that that uh, you, you want to kind of direct it in certain areas. And on top of that, you also get a dragon that, uh, that you earn through PvP quests. You can see right here, this is my dragon roost. And with this, I can have a dragon that goes with me when I go out uh, invading against some people's bases. And it's just, it's badass, dude. But um, actually, you know what? Let's do that. Now that I'm done uh, kind of showing you guys like what the bases are like, let's go actually raid some people. So you get these uh, these battle stones that you can spend to uh, to go into multiplayer fights. And these uh, these regenerate naturally over time. It caps off at 5, I kind of wish they would up it to like maybe 10 or something like that, but um, it's okay. I mean, it, it's it's a pretty good system, especially for, I think, a, a free-to-play game. Alright, so now we're actually looking at somebody else's base that I'm about to try and raid. And you can see on the left-hand side the uh, the different troops, including the dragon down there. I can actually change what my loadout is, sort of, here. Uh, and, for example, if I want to, and this is what I think is quite overpowered uh, right now, is you can just go out with, like, straight-up wardens and uh and wreck shit <laughs> it's nuts but uh, i like to i like to for the most part i like to go with like a balanced team we've also got these um these mana hunters which are pretty cool um troop source uh they are weak against skywatcher defenses so the ones that are like for example shooting like anti-air they go down really really quickly um but what they do do which is really neat is they help acquire mana faster which is an energy source. You may see on the, the right hand side there next to Nyrax, my, the ancient that I have chosen for this battle, there are three icons there. Those are his three powers that I get to use once I have enough mana to spend. And so those mana hunters will actually help me get even more mana from destroying enemy buildings to, uh, to help empower my uh, ability to use ancient powers. So let's see what we've got going on here. This guy's base is looking... it's okay. Um... I can clearly see some weaknesses here. I mean, the one thing he did do right is he put, for example, he's got a catapult here, but they're weak against uh, air types. So, for example, if I send my dragon to go after his catapult, catapult can't do a damn, damn thing. Uh, so he's at least got a watchtower standing next to it, which is uh, pretty cool. I think, let's see, is that it? Because some people like to put like stuff on the outside. It, that looks like it's pretty much it. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to... You know what? We're going to approach this from over here. So as I'm kind of putting my finger over the ground that I can cast uh, my dragon to spawn to, you can actually see how it's actually already starting to highlight the buildings that my my troop, or my dragon in this case, will start to, uh, to go after. I'm going to set him over here because I'm not too worried about spell towers against my dragon. The damage is kind of pretty minimal, to be honest. So what I'm doing here is I'm going ahead, I'm taking some shots at the uh, the gold thing there, and you can see like one point of mana just came over to me. 
And one of the cool things I like about Rival Kingdoms is I can actually go ahead and press that button right there and it kind of fast forwards. Like, if you already kind of, you know, see like what's going to happen over the next like minute or something like that, you can actually fast forward. Okay, so now I've taken out some of the building. I'm just going to go ahead and drop in some maulers there. I'm getting shot at by the anti-air. I'm going to use my dragon power, fly over, and freeze that bastard because he is dealing damage. I've got enough mana to cast a, uh, a heal for my guys. Still pew pewing away at my dragon. My dragon's gonna go down here real fast, but we're okay. We're okay. Drop in some wardens now, since um, the enemy's defenses are being distracted right now. I'm gonna drop in some undead warriors, which is one of the, the coolest powers and probably my favorite thing about Nyrax is you can summon temporarily these undead warriors to fight for you, and they can really help to I think kind of turn the tide of battle and give you uh, a little bit more of an edge. But I mean, that's the point of the Ancients, right? Is to give you an edge in battle. There's gonna drop in some more there, and now you can see that my Wardens are so far away that, uh, well, except for that one right there, <laughs> that um, that they can't even get shot at most for the most part. And that's it, I've destroyed the, the enemy stronghold, so technically I win at this point. Now, uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that you will get all of the, the gold reward. Uh, you only get, I think, the full gold reward for, for a 100% uh, destruction. Or at least, I think, their money producing buildings must be destroyed in order for you to get the, the full gold amount, for example. But uh, that was a really easy and uh, successful raid right there. And I think demonstrates the um, demonstrates like the sort of the raiding in this game very very well and you can just d keep doing that like and that's really the addicting part I think is I can go ahead go into another battle as long as I've got the battle zones and just keep raiding and getting more gold which is really really awesome but um, I actually want to show you a, a raid that somebody did against me recently now with with my uh, win to loss ratio when I'm raiding against other people's bases is probably something like nine eh, I usually get like up to a 10 win shrink streak or something like that like usually around like 11 or 12 uh, like my 11th or 12th attempt or something like that um, is usually when I go down so you can see my attacks it's like victory defeat victory vic, 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 victory <laughs> right there right and if I scroll down same thing but my defense and this is kind of why I say it's it's like tilted right now and that it seems like it's easier to go on offense than it is to play defense. For my defense, it's like defeat, defeat, victory, victory, defeat, defeat, defeat. <laughs> um, but uh, it gives you a lot of really useful information. And my favorite part about this is you can actually review and see what exactly happened when they invaded you. Even if you're not playing the game, like it will save these recordings for you to, uh, to watch. And of course, your own battles. You can re-watch your own battles against um, raiding enemy fortresses. To kind of, and it's a great learning tool, so you can uh, see like maybe what you did wrong, or you know how you can improve for the next opportunity. In this case, I honestly think that he he got a bit lucky here when he raided my base because the wardens split up just as my catapult was was about to destroy like one of his groups of wardens. But I'm, then again, it probably didn't matter at all. He just went super powerful uh, with his warden troops and they did a fantastic job of uh, tearing down my defenses and then my stronghold. So that was that, but the bright side of this is that um, he didn't actually get 100% destruction against my base, so he didn't get the full gold reward, um, which kind of is, is a little bit of a win out of the loss right there. <laughs> Again, like you, you can bring down their, their stronghold or they can bring down yours, and technically it's a victory right if when the stronghold goes down but they still have to break down the uh the other buildings if they want to to get the full reward which uh which is is nice is nice it, it uh it kind of makes you want to play i think a little bit more st even strategically in that sense as well because if it's just about the stronghold then it's it's even easier i think to focus strictly on just that and not have to worry about like what happens to your troops and stuff like that after the fact. Um, so that was a defeat. Let's take a look at a victory because um, like I said it's it's all about learning from your mistakes and I hope that this guy watched his own re review because he just threw tons of units at my base and I can't believe that he did this so poorly. First of all he throws out the wardens right and it's they're just in a really bad place 
to get destroyed now by the catapult. So again, you have to kind of understand like what your units are capable of doing, what they're weak against, and wardens are extremely weak to splash damage. So he casted those wardens, they're getting absolutely destroyed by my catapults. He also casts some uh, some soldiers. Oh no, those were undead. Um, and they went down pretty quickly. He actually put out more wardens over here. And then mana hunters? Like, what was this guy thinking? He just did everything possibly wrong here, I think, when he tried to go up against my base. Um, I don't know. You gotta pay attention, man, <laughs> to like what, what your units are good at and what they're not good at. Um, and Wardens Against Catapults is a big no-no. I mean, he, he, with as many units as it seems like he had, according to the, uh, the, 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 the results screen here, he should have, he should have, uh, been able to take down my base, no problem, but he just didn't, he didn't play it right, that's all, uh, where was it again? Here, look at that, he had, he had so much stuff, man, I don't know, but anyway, this is a fantastic game. Uh, I, I am really looking forward to seeing them doing some balancing as far as like a, a couple of things, but for the most part, if I had to give a rating for Rival Kingdoms right now, I would definitely give it a 9 out of 10. All of the features, the graphics, the sound, the the fun factor with this is just absolutely fantastic. Um, of course, like a lot, a lot of these games that you can uh, you can play, you get, for example, uh, daily rewards. That's another source of, uh, of getting for example, uh, crystals, which you use to empower your ancients, diamonds, gold, and things like that. And um, you can, if you've got the funds, to go ahead and hit up the uh, the cash shop and buy yourself some gold, buy yourself some diamonds. And that will help speed you along, but it's not going to make you win, that's for sure. And I think that those battles just proved it. Skill trumps your, your money in so many cases. I can't even explain it to you you really got to be more skillful with this game if you want to win just throwing you know tons of soldiers because you you have the diamonds or the gold or, or whatever you know to buy the chest to get them stuff is not going to make you win so that's nice i like to see that um i like to see it. it's it you can Put in money, but it's not guaranteed to make you win, which is really, really nice. Anyway, I'm kind of rambling at this point. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. This is my first look kind of preview for Rival Kingdoms. I would love to do more videos of this game. Like I said, I'm crazy addicted to it right now. I might as well be making some videos for you guys. If you would like to see um, maybe some guides or, or more explanation on the different types of buildings, um, what I think are, are like good build priorities, um, attack strategies against uh, raiding other people's bases and stuff like that i would love to yeah i'd love to do videos like that so let me know what you guys think in the comment section below click the like button to support these rival kingdoms videos here on the channel and um yeah i would like to also hopefully do some other iphone uh, games here coming up as well so stay subscribed more videos are on the way thanks again for watching my name is kinetic and i'll see you next time